Hi everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make one of these doors. Although it looks like a simple frame and panel door, there's a few details here that make it a little more unique. Uh, the first thing you'll see here is it has an arch top. And the other thing is it also has a bead all the way around the inside. Uh, what's interesting about that bead is that's an integral bead. It is part of the rails and the styles, and it's actually mitered here at the corners. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to look at is selecting the right stock for the door. The two styles on the bottom rail uh, I'll do out of some straight grained material. So you'll see in this board here, I'll get my bottom rail from this end. This will be my top rail. This will be one of my styles, and then I have another piece of stock here that will give me one of my other styles. The really important thing to look at here is since this is going to be an arch top door, we want a nice green pattern that kind of flows over the arch. Um, so you'll see this really commonly around a knot. Uh, this is a great example of one. You can see the grain just flows really nicely up in an arch here. And that's going to follow our arch nicely when we cut it out. This is a good reason against buying only select stock or only first and second stock. Um, because you'll, you won't get any of these nice defects in your boards. And you'll no, you won't have anything like this to work with. So by buying some more rustic type wood, uh, you have these options in your in your layout. So one thing to talk about is sizing the parts. Uh, this is a little different. You do have to take into account one extra detail that you normally don't have to when you're uh, when you're sizing up your rails, which is the size of the bead. Since we're going to be removing the bead from the styles, we need to add that bead back into the length of the rails. Now the opening that I'm trying to make this door for is pretty small. It's only seven and a half by eleven and an eighth. When I go to mill up my stock, I'm going to leave all of my pieces a little bit long so that I get a door that is bigger than this opening because I want to be able to cut that door down perfectly to fit the opening because that opening might not be square or my door might not be square or whatever. It doesn't matter which is more square, the door or the opening. What matters is that both the door and the opening have the same geometry. So having that extra stock allows us to trim that door down to exactly the same geometry as the opening. So what I like to do is draw out the opening and just kind of draw out my pieces here. And if needed, in this case, I'll actually go to SketchUp and draw out the actual door so I can make sure I got my measurements right. So what I need to do is calculate the length of my rails. And that's fairly straightforward. I'll start with the size of my opening, which is seven and a half. And then I'm gonna remove the two styles, which are both one and five eighths. So that I'll be reducing by an inch, sorry, I'll be reducing it by three and a quarter. Uh, and then I'm gonna add on my tenons. They're each gonna be an inch, so that'll give me another two inches. And then I need to add back in the bead that I'm gonna be removing from the styles. So on each side, that bead is three sixteenths, which gives us three eighths added back in. So our total length of our rails is going to be six and five eighths. So the formula is pretty straightforward. It's just the total width of the opening uh, minus the width of, well, of minus the width of both your styles, uh, plus the length of both your tenons, and then plus the width of both of your beads. So I actually took the time to draw this in SketchUp just to finalize my numbers and make sure that I did all my math right, and I actually ended up with the right number. So that's pretty good. <laughs> I actually feel good about my math skills. So now that we know our final length, we can go ahead and start milling up our stock. Okay, so I've cut my pieces to size. Uh, I cut my styles a little long. They're at 11 and a quarter, so I have an extra eighth of an inch of um, extra space here to work with. Uh, that'll be important later when we're cutting the miter because we'll be able to slide the top and bottom pieces in to tighten up those miters. And we'll have a little bit of uh, extra material on the ends here to trim off later. So the next thing we're going to do is focus mainly on this top piece. We're going to lay out our arc and cut that out so we can get rid of these pieces for now. Now the first thing I'm going to do is take some two-sided tape and stick this piece down to the bench. So the first thing you'll notice is I've put in a few lines here for reference. I have my lines that indicate the tenon length here and here, on both sides. And I've also drawn in a few things relative to our arc we're going to cut. I've drawn in a line that indicates the very top of that arch. And I've also drawn in a couple lines of where I want this arc to start. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is take another block of wood and stick that down to the bench right in front of it. And the other thing we need to do is find the center point. It's our center point. And then I'll just grab a square. And I want to transfer this line down onto my block. 
There we go. So now the next thing we're going to do is take a compass and we're going to find the arc um, position here on the block that hits both of our, our two points and also comes up to our uh, top of the arch here. Oh, that's pretty close. I'm running out of block here. Usually, depending on the size of your arc, the pivot point is probably going to be back here from building a bigger door. Um, this is quite a small door, so I'll just go ahead and I'll swing in this, this arch here. I had to move my block around a little bit because it kept slipping on me, but uh, now I'll go ahead and draw in my arc. I'll put some pencil in here so you can see it better. There. So that's our arc. So now the next step is I'll take this over to the bandsaw, uh, cut my arch out, and then I'll clean it up on the spindle sander. So now we've got the arch cut out and you can see how that grain just follows the curve of this arch all the way around and back down again. So now that we have all of our pieces cut and we have our arch cut out, we're going to go ahead and run a bead around the inside perimeter. The size I'm using here is 3 16 So if you look at the end here, you can see I've marked out where our groove is going to go for our panel. I want to have just a little bit of this fillet here um, and then the bead's going to come all the way down to the start of the groove. So 3 16 will get me there, this will give me a sixteenth of an inch for my fillet. And then my bead will come straight down and end at the start of my groove. So here's how all the pieces look after receiving the bead. So next I'll put a quarter inch dado into my table saw so I can start cutting the grooves in all the pieces. Since we want the groove to be centered, a way to speed up the setup is to add a center line to your piece and then line up that center line between the two halves of the dado stack. Once I get the saw set up, I'll run my test piece through just to confirm my setting and then I'll go ahead and start running my pieces through. To ensure that the groove is centered, I'll run the pieces twice through the saw one with each face against the fence. Next, I'll set up to cut my tenons. I'll set up a stop block to give me a one inch tenon and I'll cut the shoulders on my test block. After verifying my setup, I'll go ahead and cut the shoulders on my rail pieces. Make sure you only cut shoulders on the two faces. Okay, now that we have our shoulders established for our tenons, we can go ahead and start marking out our mortise locations in our styles. So let's just look at this corner down here as an example. As you can see, I'll go ahead and I'll line up the shoulder of my tenon with the, I guess it's the edge of the fillet of the bead, because all this is going to be removed later. So we don't want to have this uh, in our way when we're thinking about how deep to make this mortise. Uh, so the depth of the, the mortise is going to be an inch down. Um, so from here down will be an inch to there. So that's our depth here. Now the other thing we're going to lay out is uh, the starting and stop point of that mortise. So I'm going to start mine at a quarter inch here at the bottom. And then the other thing I'm going to indicate here is that this is going to be removed as well. So you actually want to start your end of your, your edge of your tenon down here. So I'll do a quarter inch up there as well. So now that we've established the width of the tenon, I'll head over to the mortiser and start cutting our mortise here into the styles. Okay, with the piece of my mortiser, I want to set up the bit so that it's cutting inside that groove. If you recall on the table saw, I made this groove in two passes, which makes it a little, little wider than a quarter inch. Um, so this chisel isn't going to totally clear this whole area out. So I'm going to set my chisel inside the area, making sure I'm away from the walls. And then once I'm done mortising, I'll come back with the chisel at the bench and then just pare down the walls so they're the same width as the groove. And I will also set the depth based on what we determined earlier. Now I'll just use my chisel to clean up the walls of the mortise, bringing them flush with the sides of the groove. I'll also clear up any additional waste that's still hanging out at the bottom of the mortise. 
So now back at the table saw, I'll complete the work on the tenon. I have a dado stack here in my table saw to clean up the cheeks of the tenon. So once you have your tenons fitted to your mortises, you'll have something that looks like this. See the next step we need to do is start with our mitering process. So we need to miter the top here, the bottom, and we also need to figure out where on the styles the miter needs to go. Um, so I'm just going to roughly just put in where it needs to be here so I can go to the table saw and set that up. Alright, so we're back here at the table saw again and we're going to get ready here to cut the miters on our beads. Um, so as always I've got my test block here that has my bead on it already and I'm going to use that to just verify my setup. Uh, what I have here is my table saw blade tipped to 45 degrees and using my miter gauge to uh, push the piece through. I've already run the miter gauge through the blade so I have uh, just a mark where the, the blade is going to cut. And the other thing I'm going to need is a stop block so when I actually start dialing in my pieces um, I'll have them all be the same. So the first thing I need to set up here at the table saw is the height of the cut and I'm going to do that by just slowly raising the blade into the piece uh, until I get the bead completely cut. So after a few test cuts I've got my setting dialed in pretty well. You can see my cut doesn't come quite all the way up to the shoulder of the bead. Now that's what I'm looking for. I don't want to go too far because if it slips at all I'll cut into I'll cut too far and I'll basically ruin it. So I'll leave a little bit of material here and I can clean it up later at the bench. So the first cuts I'm going to make are on my rails. Uh, these are pretty straightforward. All you're looking to do is just clip the corner. So what you're trying to do is just miter the bead just down in here. You're trying to extend the miter exactly from the corner here, which is the corner of the shoulder of the tenon and I guess the shoulder of the bead. And you don't want to go too far in this way because then you'll clip this corner and your miter won't close. And the only way to fix that problem would be to move your shoulder line of your tenon back so what I'm going to do is gradually set this up. I do have my, my indicator line here on the fence uh, where the cuts can actually be. So I'm just going to slowly put my piece into that cut line and run the piece through until I get it exactly where I want it. I'll also use a stop block just to make sure that um, all my cuts are going to be the same. So once I get this one corner dialed in, I can cut all the other three corners as well. So after a few test cuts, you can see I'm pretty close to the shoulder here. I have a little bit of material there left. Uh, this is where I'm going to leave it because I'll clean this up at the bench. So now that we have our stop lock set, we can cut the other three corners. So now that we have our miters cut on the top and bottom rail, we need to mark on our styles where they need to be mitered as well. Simply rest your rails on top of your styles and using the flat part of that bead just rest it right in there so that the rails are covering that whole bead that's going to be removed. Just line it up where you want it to be and then I'll mark right on the bead where that miter has to go with my knife. Now really you only have to mark uh, one side so you can set up your blade and your stop block for it. But I like to mark both of them because as you can see the, the miter location is going to be different on the top and the bottom. So if you happen to cut the miter for the top on the bottom or vice versa, that's going to screw up your door and you're going to be back to the beginning again. Next, I'll set up my stop block so I can cut my top uh, miter and then I'll set it up again to cut my bottom one. Okay, so next I've set up my saw to remove the bead from my styles. Uh, again, I'm using my test piece here just to confirm my setup. What I'm trying to do is remove all of the bead right along the shoulder line here. So I'll adjust my fence until I get that dialed in nicely and then I can run my pieces. I've also marked on my insert where the blade comes out of the table so I know when to stop because you, you don't want to cut too far here because you'll end up cutting into the bead you want to keep and that would be pretty unsightly. So you can see I have just a little bit of material left here. Uh, not really much at all. I think that's probably safe enough for now because I'll go back to the bench with these pieces and just clean them up a little more. I'd rather have a little bit of material here to remove than cut over too far. So 
So the first thing I'll do here at the bench is finish up removing this bead. Now with it roughly removed with my saw, I can come back and just pare this back down with a chisel. And you can see the joint isn't quite closing yet, uh, which is fine because we haven't cleaned up the, the miter on our rail yet. So this is a little long, which is preventing the joint from closing completely. So to trim these miters, you know, I left a little bit of material here. I'm going to use a little bit of a ramp piece to just guide my chisel at a 45 degree angle. This is just a scrap piece of wood I had lying around that I just cut to 45 degrees. So what I'll do is set the chisel on the miter and bring the, the ramp in and line it up. Now I just tap the ramp back just a little bit and then come down with my chisel and pare this down. There. All set. You'll see that the miter comes right down into the shoulder of the bead. So now when we take our style, we put our rail into it, make it something like this. So here's a tip, when you're doing something with a haunch, a really easy way to figure out how long that haunch needs to be is to just put your piece that's going to be receiving that haunch right on your workpiece and line up the haunch with the edge of your shoulder. Uh, and then you can come in with a flat trim saw and just cut right along here. And that'll leave you with a haunch that is, well, pretty close to the perfect size. All right, so now we have our frame completely built. Uh, there's just one last detail we need to complete before we're ready for our panel, and that's to complete the groove in the top rail. And I'll take care of that at the router table with the slot cutting bit. Once we have our slot cut, we can start uh, picking out our panel. I've got this one here. It's just an off cut that I had that has this nice, a uh, little bit of crotch figure in it, but it also has this nice upward movement of the cathedrals. So the nice thing about having your, your panel all built like this is you can actually lay your door right on your uh, panel and kind of decide where, what orientation looks best for the door. So I'm gonna do something like this with the figure coming up into the arched rail. And I also have this nice bit of uh, crotch figure here as well. Uh, something to talk about with the panels is you can really do any kind of panel you want. You can do a raised panel, you can do a flat panel, uh, or a beveled panel, anything like that. I typically do a flat panel facing towards the front because I think that with a, a raised panel and that bead detail, it might be a little bit too busy. Um, so I just use a panel razor to raise the back side of my stock so that it fits into the groove. Since when I usually cut my frame, my panel stock, it's gonna be a little thick. For instance, this is around 3 eighths of an inch thick. And of course our groove is only a quarter. Okay, so now I'm ready to lay out my panel. I have my frame sitting on my panel stock. I'm gonna move it around uh, just to find my favorite pattern. There, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'll do is just trace this out. You can kind of see my layout line here. Now what I'm gonna do is extend this whole uh, outline to be big enough to fit into my groove. So my groove is a quarter inch deep. I'm just gonna make this 3 16 of an inch bigger. That's pretty simple to do. Just measure it out and connect the lines. Up here is a little different since this isn't gonna be exactly uh, correctly scaled. So you're gonna have to just sort of um, kind of feather this down just so it stays thick in the corner. Now that I have my lines drawn, I'll head over to the bandsaw and cut this out. Uh, clean it up a little bit and then I'll cut the back level on the panel so it fits into my groove. But you can see the flat panel on the front with the bead and then on the back on the inside you have the raised panel. In this video, this door is a pretty small example. Uh, typically, I'll make something bigger than this. This is the smallest door I've ever made. Um, and actually, it's probably a little more challenging just because it was so much smaller. All the pieces were smaller. Uh, I just made it more challenging. 
Now I've done a few doors like this in the past. Um, primarily I do these doors on my spice boxes. Those doors are, are quite a bit bigger than these ones. Um, but again, the concepts are exactly the same no matter how big you make this door or how small. I'll also mention that I learned this technique from Glenn Huey. Uh, he has this technique in a few of his publications. The primary one that I learned it in was the August 2011 issue of Puffy Woodworking. Uh, you can see on the cover he was actually making a, a double tombstone door for a spice box. Um, so this article in here goes into pretty good detail about everything I've talked about today if you're interested in that. Uh, he also goes into it in a lot of his books, anywhere that this, that this kind of door is made. The other book I'm working off here is Building Period Furniture. So if you're interested in learning a little more about this construction style for this door, uh, take a look at Glenn's work. Uh, he does a really good job explaining it. He taught me how to do it, so that means something. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you incorporate one of these doors into a future project of yours. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, please feel free to leave me a comment. I always appreciate those and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. So again, thanks for watching and until next time, happy woodworking.